Hello, my name is Ken Gasgard. When DB2000 is first installed and started, it has no database. It needs information to identify the database you wish to work with. To start this process, click on Start. From the district list, select your district and confirm it. From the squadron list, select your squadron. Or, if you are desiring to have a district database, click on the district entry at the top of the list. I'm going to start a database and confirm. Now we have an empty database according to the selections just made and we need to download an update from headquarters to fill it. Next we need to establish our authorization to use the database. Click on the menu settings and select the entry user authorization. Enter your certificate number and next enter your email address. Next, we need to enter the password that is issued to each squadron by headquarters each year. And there are three levels of passwords. User level is for use by any member that needs to use DB2000. Updater allows the holder to update the headquarters computer with new information. And master, which is usually held by the commander, and can be used to change the other passwords if needed. So now we must enter the, the appropriate password. Now if this was an updater password, check this box to show that you have updater rights. If you don't have updater rights, just leave it blank. I do have updater rights on this particular password and now I'm going to save my authorization. Okay, we have selected the appropriate district and squadron. We have established our um, authorization and now we can proceed to download a roster update. There are two ways of downloading uh, updates from headquarters. By email and by using an add-on program called MQ Series Client. The best way is with the MQ Series Client because that allows you to log on to the headquarters computer directly. However, this computer doesn't have MQ Series Clients, so we're going to use the email method. Click on the import menu and request a roster from website. DB2000 will go online to that website. And you will see that all of your information was inserted automatically. The request is already submitted and is OK. And all we need to do is to dismiss the browser. So we will close the browser and now in a few minutes we should check our email to see if the uh, attachment is available. This may take anywhere from uh, a few minutes to a, an hour or so depending on uh, how the headquarters computer is reacting. So next we go online to see if we have any email. I'm going to sign in to my email account And with any luck, it may be there. Click on Mail. Oh. Click on my inbox. And I have a notification from headquarters, Linda Stevens on headquarters, that the roster request has been received, but at the moment I don't see any signs of an actual roster. 
so we will have to check again um, after some more time. Returning to my email again, I find that the uh, squadron update is now available for me, so I will click on it and take a look. And in fact, there it is, and I have the attachment, and it says for DB2000 the file can be saved as is. And I would stress that. Do not attempt to open this file. DB2000 expects to find it exactly as it is. So I'll click on that, click on download, and save. And it is important to remember where you save things. So I have set up a file on my, uh, a folder on my computer called attachments. I'm going to save it there. Save. Now you see that it's already downloaded. I close, and I close the browser. Okay, we now have a file that we can use to update DB2000. We have saved our update file, so the next thing to do is to go to import and then select update with email roster file. Now we see our updating uh, dialog and although it has many many options and features since this is our first database we need do nothing except to press the start button. This opens a file dialog and now we must go and look for our attachment. In my documents, attachments, and there's the file. I highlight it and open it. Now you see it is decoding the roster. The roster is encrypted. Importing the module data and finally the import is complete. Now the encryption that you saw there is not so much for security as it is for um, knowing that the file is uh, a bona fide file from headquarters and not an imposter. Now that we've finished our import we can click on the finish button. Now you'll see all these buttons are no longer grayed out. We have a functional database which we may use now for whatever purpose we had in mind.